and that's what we I think we talked about. Well, we'll I'll, I'll tell you later. I guess. <clears throat> that's the video. And here comes the audio. You ready? Yep. Three, two, one. You're live. Welcome to the Jeremiah Show, Dr. D. Yes. We are going on hour three. We're like wow. boxers in a ring right now. We're, I guess so. And it just gets better and better it here does on the show. Indeed. Our, our guests get better and better. Yeah. We brought, we, we actually just uh, saved a life today. I don't know if you're aware of this. I did not but know that. The show saved a life. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh nearing 100 degrees up there in washington where our guest is our special guest oh. is today and he was out run operating his farm cutting hay and uh, uh, and uh. and could have suffered a heat stroke but <laughs> the jeremiah show just in the nick of time called and Great. saved yeah oh, we, we saved fantastic. him we pulled him into the air conditioning <laughs> Man. oh greg knight our old our good friend from uh up in pacific northwest up yeah. in washington that's right. Hello, guys. How are you doing, my friend? You, I'm doing great. You you cooling down? I hope. I hope your your, to, core, yeah. your core temperature is coming back in line. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You you're asking. You're going to ask me, Greg Knight. I know that name. Who is who is Greg Knight? Who's well, Greg Knight? Yeah. Thank you for asking, Doctor D. <laughs> real farm, real people, real music. That's Greg Knight in a Ooh. nutshell uh greg knight and his wife his family his wife zara and their family run the uh, and throw one of the best festivals in the united states every summer it's the farm jam festival mm -hmm. i believe this is year four am i right there greg you're, that's you're, right it's our fourth year in existence covid well, canceled the show so it'll be our third show well, what's COVID? COVID what? Rude. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding you. This is the best festival. You guys got to check it out. I'm hoping to get to your festival this year. That is my plan. We uh, sure hope so. Labor Day weekend. Yeah. So beware. <laughs> Dr. D and I are coming. The Dr. Only... D is going to bring his RV and I'm going to rent one and we're going to, we're yeah. going to take a road trip. Exactly. Although take I the must show on the road. I must request uh, no triple digits, please. No, Labor Day weekend, it's always right about 80. Okay. Yeah, and then isn't it strange, Greg, tell me, correct me if I'm wrong, like the day after the weekend, it like instantly feels like fall. Like the leaves like, start to turn colors. It feels, you know, we get a frost a week or so later and autumn's here. Oh. I, I, I miss that. Nice. It, it's just really like, that's the best time to go up there. You're right, Greg. It's oh, it just, man. The summer it's goodbye to the summer and the fall comes and you feel it and your kids are going back to school and everybody's going back to to work but it just it just feels good it's a nice place to be that's up in Colville Washington we're talking about it's Labor Day weekend September 2nd 3rd and 4th so here's what we're doing Greg Greg and his wife who is working today so it's just Greg um uh Greg and his wife come on every summer and they usually tell us about the show after it's happened or right before so we greg and i thought we'd do something different this year mm -hmm. we're going to interview every band that plays at the uh this upcoming 2022 you're going to interview 500 bands huh farm jam festival <laughs> did i say 500 no you didn't i just throw that out oh. there no 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 i don't know how many you. there are i have them in front of me i haven't counted them do you know greg how many yeah, there are 16, 16 oh, amazing performers. So, so between now we got to get on it uh -huh. between now and uh, labor, day. labor day weekend yeah thank you for uh, <laughs> richard's helping me out in this third hour i appreciate it <laughs> what i'd appreciate more if you gave me some coffee yeah really or a cocktail which way yeah <laughs> um yeah so so we're gonna we're gonna talk about three of the headliners for the Farm Jam Festival for Labor Day weekend. Joe Nichols, Matt Stell, and Cooper Allen. Tell us about your headliners, Greg. Yeah, Joe Nichols is somebody that everyone knows who who listens to country music. He's had number one hits on the radio for years. Uh, Tequila makes her clothes fall off. I think everybody knows that song. Uh -huh. You know, it's one of those songs where grandmas know it, and our eighth grade daughter knows it. So. <laughs> Every, everybody that's got a uh, a solo red solo cup in their hand knows it <laughs> that's right and and so he's our saturday night performer we're really looking forward to him but then as 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 fate has it our next 
top two people both are playing back to back on Sunday. So Sunday has turned out to be a great show with Matt Stell ending the night. Now, so Matt don't, leave, has that, don't leave early. Don't leave early. That's right. <laughs> don't pack up. Matt has songs all over Sirius XM radio, all over uh, uh, the radio on the airwaves. He uh, is touring and has a huge tour going on right now this summer. And then playing immediately before him is a up and comer, brand new person named uh, Cooper Allen. And, you know, Cooper's claim to fame is he has blown up TikTok. If it seems like everybody I know that has watched his mashups on TikTok. And by the way, he has some amazing original country music that he started to produce, just signed a, uh, uh, with a big agency in Nashville. We were lucky enough to book him a year ago before he was as big as he is now. Greg, does he have more hits on TikTok than uh, and fans than you do? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think his TikTok fans, I think, uh, are like 9 million or How so. can this be? 9 million. That's just incredible. Yes. It's just, it, it, what does that make? How do you th- feel about that, seeing these changes in the music industry, seeing the, the change, the way that, that, that fan, that artists find fans these days, isn't that just uh, mind blowing to you, Greg? Yeah, it is. You know, on one hand, it's pretty neat because uh, it provides a better direct connection. You know, the fans can go out and select and they can see who they like to uh, uh, listen to and who, who they want to see perform. And uh, it's a huge change, though. It, it, it has changed the way we look for talent, the way we, we recruit talent, uh, and, and then the way we, we hire it and, uh, uh, and how it's promoted. It, it's probably very helpful, though. You get to actually see, it's almost like a social indicator or a, a popularity contest. You can see you, you can see almost your return, how many people will actually be thrilled with your choice of an artist at your festival yeah oh yes and someone like him he he's doing his first headline tour uh in the southwest and midwest right now and selling out every venue so it's pretty fun to watch yeah very very neat and okay so let's talk about you know i mentioned in the beginning uh, your tagline real farm real people real music if you haven't checked out or heard one of our interviews that we do every summer with greg and Azara Knight at the, um, what's your farm name again? I forget. Just Knight Farms. Knight Farms. Oh, makes sense. Easy cool, enough. Cool name. Yeah. Uh, yeah, very cool name. I, I mean, Greg Knight, that you just sound like, already you sound like an action hero or something to me. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if you haven't heard one of the past shows and we've interviewed and talked to Greg and Zara about their farm, they've, they've got a family farm. It's a real farm that they operate throughout the year. They use the farm um, for entertainment purposes for people that want to experience the farm life. They've got a festival and then they've got a corn maze, Um, real people. Well, as you can see in here, Greg's a real people. <laughs> he's, he's a real, real people. people huh? he's a real I'm a real person. That's he's right. Not, he's not a bot. He's not a TikTok <laughs> bot. Um, the, he's got a passion, him and his wife and his entire family. They love music. They love even more original music and indie bands, and they support them um, through this labor of love that they throw, this big festival that they throw every year on their farm, on the night farm. They're not corporate executives, although I don't know why Greg is wearing a three-piece suit on the farm today when he's bailing hay. But it's just my collar shirt. <laughs> if you see on the YouTube, he's wearing on the YouTube interview. Well, um, just, I, rem- just let them know, though, the suit is John Deere green. That is true. Right. John, he's got the John Deere cap on. You got it. Um, you always know if usually a good person is, is wearing that John Deere cap. Have oh, you yeah. ever noticed that? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. always. I've met a good guy in my life, a good farmer. They've, they've always, they're always wearing that worn out, you know, sweat you know, stained. And by the way, when you talk about country music, and I was listening to uh, some interviews with people who are not country in the context, but they were covering like the country music awards, that kind of thing. And they expressed the biggest difference 
between that awards show specifically and any other awards show, whether it's music or movies or Emmys, what have you, they said that the people, the country musicians and all of the country people treated them as if they were in, they were home, that the person that was there covering was treated as if they were at home. I mean, it was just the most family oriented, friendly kind of thing that you had ever experienced. And I I love that. And I know that farming is in the same context because I'm sure many farmers are big country music fans. Well, uh, if I jump in for us. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say before I, uh, I know from talking to Greg and Zara um, over the years, the last two or three years we've talked, um, they're like that. And you, you hold a, this is what I, I think so unique about your festival that stands out up above and beyond many of them out there is that the the farm jam festival held at the night ranch the greg and zara and the bands and the fans are all mingling and there it's it's that what you're talking about dr d that uh that you're in my home yeah uh, and we're all enjoying this together yeah. and you know what can i get for you and yeah. relax and enjoy it and enjoy my exactly. farm and they don't care about anything other than the hospitality they don't get into conversations about anything other than the hospitality and that and that warmth in that community yeah what's what's the philosophy there greg talk about that a little bit you know what our tagline says it all real farm real people this was my grandparents farm uh, then my dad grew up here and farmed it, and now I'm farming it with my boys. And as bands drive in, they drive past our house, which, of course, is an old white farmhouse that's been here forever. They drive past the red barns, and they show up, and they're welcome to, to uh, uh, be made to feel like family. Last year, our headliner, Tyler Farr, showed up and said, hey, can I go fishing? We went downtown, grabbed him a fishing license. And away we went, and he, and he spent the afternoon fly fishing up on a, on a, on a nearby river. So uh, from the hospitality and how we treat the bands and their crews, uh, how we even treat the stagehands, you know, the stage labor from Spokane, uh, we're one of their top priority. When we reach out to them and say we need eight people, they come up, we give them corn to eat and take home each night. And it's just, we really want people to feel like they're they're uh like they're on their grandma's farm if their grandma would have had a farm mm-hmm. mm. and really great food and wine and beer and and uh food and beverage i should say right greg yes we yeah, have food vendors. vendors and alcohol vendors and non-alcohol vendors and it just it's a laid-back time compared to some of the the festivals that are a little more uh i don't know if stressful is the word but a little more jam-packed you know, high energy. Our music is high energy, but the rest of the time it's pretty laid back. You know, this year we're adding uh, Saturday afternoon, heading up to when the bands start, we have a huge cornhole tournament hosted by these professional cornhole players. I'm pretty good at cornhole. How about you, Dr. D? Uh, I I mean, honestly, I have, I've seen it. (laughs) I've watched people Uh, play it, but no, I, uh, I'm a spectator. It's a fun beer drinking game guys. Is, but did you say you have professional corn holers there i can't i didn't know there was such a oh, thing i thought I you said that did i make that up um <laughs> <laughs> did, I, did i come up with that maybe i was thinking of myself as a, i can see to it be, now on cbs sports yeah corn corn holers <laughs> professional corn holers association Craig, uh, it just whenever I we talk, uh, and and you talk about the mm-hmm. festival and and the way it goes over the weekend, I I know those Washington summers and uh, end of summers there, um, the lake, you know, the lake life and the rivers and the the outdoors, just the the air uh, and and great music and the smell of great food and camping out right there on your farm. If I remember correctly, there's a little river that runs through it and exactly. Um, you know, does any could anything sound better than going to the Farm Jam Festival to to end your summer? I don't, I think not. What do you think, Doctor D? No, not at all. And it would remind me, of course, of my days growing up, uh, going out to my grandmother and grandfather's house in Florence, Arizona. Now that's not that they weren't farmers, 
but there were fields all around the town of Florence, Arizona, where they would take us to pick the corn that then my grandmother would prepare for tamales, or we'd go out and we to the, the grape vines, uh, mm-hmm. the vineyards for this was these were table grapes, and they, they would allow you to pick in moderation, you know, grapes for, you know, for your family, that kind of thing, and so on and so forth. And um, my, uh, my uncles are not my uncles, um, my nephews, um, my, my mother's sister, her boys, they were into rodeo, you know, and, and that type of thing. Mm-hmm. And also uh, even producing, I, I even produced for some, uh, a couple of years back in Arizona, the uh, professional uh, 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 rodeo uh, program. There was a, the program that we would run uh, the professional uh, uh, rodeo circuit. Any so rodeo, really any rodeo, the farm that weekend. <laughs> yeah, I think you got enough to worry about. Huh? Oh yeah, really. Um, great. Tell us other highlights, uh, camping and all that. What what do they need to know right now? Because again, what I started to say in the beginning is we're talking to Greg today. I'm sure Zara will join us and when she can in some other program. We're going to interview all of the 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 bands that are playing at Farm Jam Festival. Memorial weekend, uh, Labor Day, is it Memorial Labor Day? Labor Day, right? Labor, Labor Day. Day. Labor Day. I always I get them backwards. I'm, I'm dyslexic. It's easy, it's easy to do, let me tell I'm you. I'm dyslexic there. So anyway, the, we'll interview everyone, and then we want to do a little recap with Greg and Azera at That's the right. end of it. So, so this is just part one of part three of part 17 or 18 or 19, whatever, <laughs> <laughs> however many bands I can get on the show. What do they need to know, though, Greg, right, right now at this stage? Right um, now, we 50, have... Tickets By the way, on sorry, sale. I keep interrupting you. I have to say this. I love this on your website. Uh, there's a ticker. Where did it go? The ticker. Um, hold, you've got 49 days, 21 hours and 37 <laughs> minutes. I love it. There's not a lot of time. I started. And, and when I looked at this, it was 50 days. So <laughs> it's, already, it's already changed by a day when wow. I when I when I turned when I blinked. Oh man! No, it's, it's, now, it's, Greg, it's, I will not interrupt it's you. Going, going fast, that's okay. We have two tiers of VIP, and one of those is already sold out. And so, tickets. If you want passes, you better get them now. A unique thing about our festival is we also have single day passes. You're living in Spokane. You want to drive up for the evening, watch music, and go home. You can do that. There's no need to. Uh, camp or spend the whole weekend but we would love to have you if you want to camp we have camping for rvs we have camping for tents we have about whatever you want all right let me ask you some of these frequently asked questions you've got here um because i think that'll be helpful how does the camping and parking work on the farm specifically Yeah, parking's free if you're just coming for the day we don't charge anything for parking uh you can come in you can park watch a show and leave we have the two levels of camping. But for all of these, you need a festival pass to get in the gate. It's not a hangout. You got to have a pass to get in. When should they arrive? And what happens if they arrive early? We're going to open camping a day early this year. We haven't formally announced it, but we're having enough requests for it. So we'll open camping Thursday afternoon at three. Okay. Um, I got, I got a quick question on the on the camping part, especially if it's an RV or travel trailer or something like that. Is this boondocking or is this uh, full hookup? It's boondocking. Okay, just wanted to clarify. <laughs> when, they, when they arrive or when we arrive, will the vehicle be searched? <laughs> that's, a, that's a question. It is. Ask. It is a valid question, though. <laughs> you know, we get asked that a lot, and uh, like all venues, we have the right to do that. We've never searched anybody. The Will only Dr. D's vehicle be searched. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's <laughs> <a> yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, and, and, and the usual information for going into a performance venue no glass or bottles, no weapons, that sort of stuff, no smoking inside the venue area. Which, if you remember, Jeremiah, our venue wall slash fence is a row of hay bales eight feet high. Yeah. <laughs> That's wow. Cool. I love that. I, I want to sit up on that one. Um, the most important question that everybody wants to know, Greg, how can they charge their cell phone? <laughs> 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 yeah. Good luck with that one. 
Yeah, we get asked that a lot too. We don't have a charging station, but uh, you know, most people have them if they've got a motorhome or RV. There are in the venue some power outlets to do that as well, but it has not been an issue. Well, go to farmjamfestival.com. Get all your questions answered, uh, questions that I just asked and uh, many, many more. Uh, you can also check out the 2022 lineup. You can get your tickets there and you've got uh, camping rules and, and get your camping passes. The whole deal. You've also got some great merch. Um, check it out again. It's farmjamfestival.com. We're going to take a quick break, uh, break, Greg. And when we come back, um, we'll, we'll have final words from you. And we just can't wait for this. Great. Like, Thank farm. you. Yeah, yeah, the Farm Jam Festival 2022. Let me tell you where. Where? 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 Well, I already Day. told you where to go, but it's, uh, let me tell you who's playing. The headliners, Joe yeah. Nichols, Matt Stell, and Cooper Allen. Real farm, real people, real music. Do not miss out. Get your festival and camping passes before they're gone. This is for Labor Day weekend, September 2nd, 3rd, and 4th up in Colville, Washington. Um, here's a phone number, 509-255-3905. Check out the entire amazing lineup on the website, farmjamfestival.com. We'll be right back. Clear. Okay. And... All right, Greg. So let me just think here. We've got Go four minutes. Um, why don't I just kind of turn it over to you to, to, to make your most heartfelt welcome to okay. your to your uh, to the your people fans. that are coming your fans to and, your fans and your yeah that's right about great and 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 when we're done jeremiah i've got a list of band contacts i'll send you oh, okay great uh, yeah i think you sent me quite a few so i'm gonna oh, get working I, on those uh, before the weekend's up the, those okay. will all be out uh, do you want me to cc you on them or, or blind copy you or okay yeah you don't want all the back and forth um I'll let you know as they come in. I'll try to get every single Perfect. one of them. I think we probably can. Yeah, we'll do it. All right, All right. Dr. D. Ready? Three, two, one. Welcome back to the Farm Jam Festival 2022. Greg Knight is here. Greg Knight is the founder. He's the uh, the <laughs> festival organizer. He owns the farm, him and his wife, Zara, and their children. Uh, Greg, you got a couple minutes here. Talk right to your talk to your fans out there, the people that love your Farm Jam Festival, and the, those that have not yet discovered it. What do you want to say? You know, uh, something we haven't mentioned, Jeremiah. We're not just country music. We've got bluegrass. We've got rock and roll. We have a nice mix. We we are multiple genres thrown in over the course of a weekend. Which uh, some festivals you go to, it's three days of music that sounds exactly the same. And so we like to mix it up, different kinds of country. We have red dirt country from Texas. We have oh, yeah. uh, uh, radio country. We have traditional <laughs> country. We have about everything. We have some rock and roll. Uh, and you get to watch it all on the farm in the middle of a hay field where you can see the mountains. Uh, there's a corn field that we have right there. And this year we actually have a vendor who's going to be picking our corn and selling corn on the cob in the venue as well. It's about as fresh as it gets. And uh, it's just a laid back, very fun time. We're, we're family friendly, bring your kids, let them run around and, and enjoy the outdoors. Uh, tickets are on sale, but they're going fast. And I don't want people to, you know, have it be mid August and everybody think, oh man, I, I should have gotten tickets, but I didn't, that would be a mistake. So big, we have- Big bummer. <laughs> we have a lot of independent artists we mentioned Cooper Allen earlier. He's an independent person, no record label contract. And uh, uh, Friday night is all bands from the Northwest that are just some amazing up and comers. So we are excited for this year's Farm Jam Festival. Oh, we're excited as well, Greg. Um, what Greg failed to mention there, you just forgot one thing, Greg, the first 20 ticket buyers get to help out with the chores. <laughs> on the farm we need corn pickers actually. <laughs> corn pickers yeah. that's right corn, become a corn picker that's on the night true. farm and then go play uh yeah. cornhole cornhole uh do you have a corn maze there buddy yes we have a corn maze and pumpkin patch oh very cool very sounds great greg and we can't wait to so we're going to start interviewing and bringing on the show all the bands are going to uh headline and play at the farm jam festival you want to check that out 
Check out the lineup for 2022 on the website, farmjamfestival.com. Greg Knight, special guest. Appreciate you so much, Greg. We'll talk to you very soon. And in Thanks the again, meantime, guys. stay cool Always out a there. Pleasure. Stay cool yeah. out there. Put that igloo. I remember, do you still put an igloo on the back of the truck with water? <laughs> we do on the back of our truck and the back of our trailer. Uh, yeah, our, gee, our I miss it all. It's all nostalgia for me. All yeah. right. Thanks, Craig. Thanks, guys. We'll talk to you soon. We'll be right back with our special guest coming up uh, from the AOC restaurant group down in, uh, not group, but restaurants down in Los Angeles. We've got Matt. Duggan. Uh-huh. I remember that now. Uh, I'm pretty sure I got that right. You're Duggan. He's Duggan. That's right. We got Matt Duggan. And we've also got um, the, the, the mixologist, the bar, the head, the head barman, Ignacio Mario. They're both joining us next. We'll be right back. Okay. Here. Hey, yes, there. Oh, our, 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 our Matt friends in here. That. Matt is there. Did Greg hey, thanks again, guys. Thank you. You are Greg. very welcome. Thank you, Greg. Yep. Thank we'll you. Be in touch. I'll send this to you a little bit later tonight. Okay. All right. All right. He's out. I'm going to lock this in over here and then um, I'm going to let Matt in. Okay. Why don't you say hi to him and I'm going to leave him back. All I'm right. All right. Okay. There's that. Hello, Matt. Oh, my head. Just throw me to a. Uh, here, we're going to charge right okay. now. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. Are we unmuted? All right. Uh, and there you okay. are. Very good. Very good. How are you, Matt? I think we're unmuted. Hello. Oh. Hello. How are you? There you are. How are you doing, Matt? Fantastic. Really, really good. Like, which one of you is Matt? This is Matt. And the young, handsome guy is Mario. My name is Ignacio Murillo, yes. Ignacio, Mario, how are you, sir? Doing great. How are you? Doing very well, Jeremiah. Just uh, stepped out for just a moment, but he's coming right back. Right. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. And we well, nice to, I don't know if I've ever actually clapped eyes on you there, Mr. Dugan. Uh, it's been probably a couple of years since we spoke, right? I believe it is, sir. Yes, it is. And you got to <laughs> get the spelling of your name right. Drop okay. the G. Drop that extra G overboard. <laughs> More G's better. More G's better. Well, okay. I won't argue with you on that. And there he is. He has arrived. And Mario. Matt. There's the man. How are you, Jeremiah? Oh, good to see you, man. I'm, I'm, I, I heard you had left and you're back, and I'm so happy that you are. Yeah, I sowed my uh, uh, wild professional oats for, uh, for a total of about six months. And when Carolyn said, uh, let's get the band back together, uh, I don't know, it got my heart beating. And I said, yes. Yeah, you got like, right. we had Caroline on uh, about an hour ago for the <laughs> Hollywood Bowl. Yeah. And she uh, she just said, you know, said so many great things about you as uh, you know, so easy to do, but that your family was the main standout, you know, that they were so happy to have you back as your family. Yeah. Um, I wanted to meet an Ignacio. Yes. Oh. Is that how it's pronounced? <laughs> Good. What a cocktail menu, my friend. I love it. I got to taste it. Well, yeah, you should come and taste it. Yeah, you know where we are. Richard's doing yoga. Oh, wow. <laughs> hey, this is our third show. This third is our hour. third hour. Yeah, guys, but we're saving the best for last That's year. Right. We're, we're, I'm we're ready excited. To... So uh, let me just get a couple things here. Let yeah. me go over a couple of quick things here and we'll get started. Um, Matt, if I remember correctly, it's Duggan, not Dugan. Right. Right? Yes, Duggan. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And no, so you I... go ahead and mispronounce it. It's okay. That's it. <laughs> Hey, well, I just want to double, you know, it's important to get this stuff right. And Ignacio, um, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that correctly. Yes. Ignacio. Yes. Ignacio. And then let me see your last name here. I want to make uh Mario. Mario. Yes. Yeah. Mario. So the kind of like silent L's. Yeah. Mario. All yeah, right. I think I got it. So here's the format guys. What I wanted to do was um, I'll set up. I'll set up the restaurant. I'll talk about, we'll introduce you, Matt. Then we'll introduce you, uh, or maybe Matt, you want to introduce Ignacio. And then um, I love your story, Ignacio. So I'd love to tell, that's how I started out in the restaurant business was as a busser. So I'd love to tell your story, both of your stories. And then we've got five drinks, right? So um, 
uh, what I'd like to do, Richard, can you share the screen? I will put the photos of the drinks up for the YouTube channel. Last show. Yeah, while you're talking about them. And then what I was going to do is I'll mention the name and mm -hmm. uh, maybe you can talk. I've got your quotes here. I don't know if Matt, Matt, if you got my right, you rundown. You should be able to now. Yeah, yeah, but you should have like those are the quotes I got from Ignacio. Mm -hmm. But maybe you just do those out loud for us. You kind of bring them to life for the listener. What do you guys think? Yeah, yeah, I think I'll probably, uh, you know, this is this is a sort of the written word description, and I'm sure that uh, I'm sure my partner is going to be a little more conversational right. and, and and go into why, you know, how he was inspired. We, by three o'clock is uh, right around three is our deadline. So perfect. Okay, minutes. guys. So I'm glad you like that, and then Beautiful. feel free to add anything else you like. Absolutely. Um, we've got 25 minutes is what we got on the clock, so we got a hard out because we got a live show behind us. So let's and I'll be started. testing the drinks. So I'll be drinking uh, off. All, I have all five in this mug. So yeah. do I have screen share now, Doctor? You D? should. Yes. Okay. So let's get started here, guys. You all ready? We're ready. Yes, we're ready. Oh, you were born ready, right? And you're ready. I'm ready. Three, two, one. Hey, welcome back to the Jeremiah Show. We saved uh, the most fun. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh, don't they taste good? We're just taste. Which one are you having right now? I'm having, tasting... I have all five. Oh, <laughs> all in one cup. Yeah. Uh, it's called the suicide, uh, and I may not make it through the show. Oh, Doctor D, we got our old friend Matt. Wow. Hey, Matt. Hugging back. Woohoo! AOC. This is what we're talking about. This is what we're drinking. This is what we're doing. AOC debuts five new seasonal cocktails oh, at Third nice. Street and the Brentwood locations. These are market fresh. Do you know what I love about this kind of a program? You like to interrupt me as I'm well, telling you about this program? Well, it's because these people, <laughs> these guys are taking your typical different spirits or alcohols uh -huh. and mixing them in ways in which people are willing to try them and they're really good. With, but they don't get criticized with great. But when I mix oh, seven we're up not with get scotch into that again, we're not doing that right now. <laughs> we don't have enough time. <laughs> hey, Matt probably remembers that story. That's how many times you've told it. Market oh, okay. fresh. And Dr. D just needs like a couch right now. He just needs yeah. somebody to listen. Therapy. I'm sorry. I didn't help at all. I probably just scarred, right. I scarred you even worse. <laughs> but let me go back go to ahead. what we're doing here. Because yes. I don't, we don't have enough time with the, our friends here. AOC. 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 Well, you know this restaurant mm -hmm. and if you don't go go eat at this restaurant okay. you got two choices mm -hmm. of places two locations they make it easy for you third street or third brentwood street. um they're yeah. debuting five new seasonal cocktails as mm -hmm. i was saying dr d yes market fresh yes they're All about it. yeah they're seasonal they're handcrafted by head barman who we have the honor of introducing to the listeners to the show cool, today he's on cool, our show cool, cool. ignacio Murillo. yes they're available at Amazing. suzanne going and caroline stein's aoc restaurants um so welcome to the program guys let me talk uh, we've got matt matt if you remember and i don't know if you know this matt you probably don't i probably haven't told you yeah. we did a love letter to luke restaurant yeah when Luke closed, sadly, in 2020, right. March 2020, we did a love letter to Luke and, and Matt helped us invite on some of the great guests that oh, they'd yeah. seen over the years, some great, great, great guests. And, and I encourage you to go back to that show and listen. Uh -huh. But did you know that those that part one and that part two that we did, Matt? Yeah, the soundtrack was handpicked by either Matt or it was the soundtrack of Luke. Uh, that Caroline and Suzanne, yeah. I mean, the whole thing was produced uh, as a love letter to this iconic restaurant, Luke, that had been there for over 20 years in, in L.A. Mm. Um, almost everybody remembers it and misses it. Matt was the general manager. So, you know, Matt, he, he's the man, they say, who remembers <laughs> like everyone's that. name in their face. Yeah, He's well recognized for effortlessly <laughs> running Suzanne and Caroline's flagship, Luke's, from 2008 until its closure last March in 2020. What you don't know, what I'm getting to is that those two shows are on our podcast. Thousands and thousands and thousands of listens. Those are the number one shows um, out of out of almost all the 500 shows we've done. They are the number one most played. They still get played. People still find the shows and they still play them. So um, Matt, thank you for doing those, those, the love letter to Luke with us. 
thank you for the opportunity. And I mean, it, it really was, it was emotional and uh, um, there was a lot of love in that. And uh, I, I just, I'm so grateful for the opportunity that you thought of that and reached out it was a big deal to us. So thank you. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed putting that together with you guys. Ignacio, uh, let's hear a little bit about you. I love this. You started out as I did in the business as a bus boy. Or oh, yeah, yeah. Long time ago, 18 years uh, ago. 18 years ago. Wow. So what was that was at, AO, at AOC at 3rd and Crescent Heights, right? Yeah, that was right. Um, that was my first job, actually, when I came from Mexico. Uh -huh. And uh, I started working over there. And um, so I started... Uh, Bossing tables, uh, cleaning silverware, plates, and everything. And, you know, since then, I've been stepping up little by little, you know. Yeah. Like, well, uh, bar back and bartending a little bit. So, yeah. yeah he fell in love with the menu and really got a good uh, close up look at what the chefs were doing. He, he, he likes to talk about how much it meant to him when he was running the food, about how he learned that menu and first started to notice what the chefs were doing. Yeah. yeah. Well, and so important for, mm -hmm the bar, especially the head bartender, the person who's making the cocktails, yeah. um, des designing the, the cocktail list to really be in tune with the chef and the food that they're serving seasonally or, or year round and, and kind of in compliment, right? Not take away from, you don't want to distract from the chef's plates, but you want to um, just accentuate or bring to life what they're doing and work kind of in tandem, hand in hand, in concert, right, Ignacio? Is that, right. is that a goal? Working with the, whatever product comes from the market with the chef and uh, pairing come with uh, her dishes and everything, all the um, summer product that we have right now, which is delicious. We got the uh, wonderful peaches, melons, all kinds of fruits and vegetables. So yeah, I try to do... Um, um, great cocktails and everything they're really pairing with the uh, susan food and everything so that's what we're doing let me go back to your your 18 years ago your first at the aoc at third and crescent heights you were it was your first job you said yeah. um in in california in the united states what did that feel like did you know that was suzanne going suzanne going then and caroline stein caroline stein were they the name uh, that they are now, um, you know, iconic chefs and sommeliers and wine, wine and beer. Uh, you know, are, were they, what was that like walking in AOC? Did you know anything about them or did you just say, I need a job? And uh, yeah, I mean, basically that's, that's all. I was looking for a job and, and I get there. I didn't know how famous they are and everything, how they talent they are. And um, so since I started working there and, um, um see how busy they are and everything other people they want to try their food their wine and everything so i start noticing like i'm in the right place right here like you know <laughs> um, yeah and, i mean and you know, always like pushing myself to um to taste their food whenever they do like uh food tasting cheese tasting like wine like i didn't even know anything about wine like a wine i, I didn't like the wine either but you know they made me, they made me to try and you know, they're talking about like, oh, this is tastes like this, like that. And I didn't taste anything there, but I still drink it. And, you know, so. Well, I love that part of your story that that you went to, you showed up for the wine and cheese tastings or the or the wine tastings and um, that you immersed yourself yeah. as a professional. You wanted to learn more. I think I love that story. I love that passion. Yeah, um, why did you love? Why did you want to learn more? Why did what do you love about? food wine cocktails beer what do you love about your business you know what um i really love about um these because um i mean i love to eat i like good food um i like good uh, fresh and product like from the farmer's market um i, I like to be creative creative it you know mm -hmm. um i see how the chefs they bring a new product um, from the markets and everything and I go from there, like I want to learn, I ask them how do, how do they do this? How do they do purees and other stuff with the pastry chefs? So I communicate basically with everybody, uh, co-workers and chefs and everything. And that's the way I've been learning and putting things together, you know? Um, I love, I love that. He did push himself and that's what he's done all along. Like he, he just asks you questions. He wants to know all the time, really inquisitive. And then uh, the amazing part is He'll, he'll learn a technique. He'll take the notes the first few times he tries it. 
and then and then it just becomes a part of him and then he uh, wants to learn a new what's thing. next yeah, what's yeah. Next? so now yeah. he's in that that point where he he's teaching us well, yeah <laughs> that's beautiful matt as a general manager you you know i know i've been a, G, a gm in the past we yeah. know that's not that common that that people like ignacio are not, are not that common that's the exception not the not the standard which it should be in this business but for someone uh to really show up not just to show up but to show up with passion with uh yearning with uh with um just a love for the business and wanting to know more i mean how do you motivate and and a person like Ignacio and, and, and recognize him. Uh, no, this, is, this is one of those guys that you just get out, you try to give him what he needs and get the hell out of his way. Yeah. It's not about winding him up. He's got a motor. He's driven. Yeah. Uh, there's, there are things he wants. So it's really just uh, really trying to clear the path and give him the tools he needs. So these days, our conversations are more like, what do you need to get to the next place? Or what are you thinking of for your next drinks? And what, how can I help? You know, yeah. it's not, it's the, like the motivation part, he's got to handle. It. And that's why he's so driven. And he's prolific too. The ideas are prolific. Uh, we don't have a cocktail list big enough, uh, but the seasons keep changing. And yeah, well, there's always. Pocket, so we're moving on. Yeah. And, you know, when, one thing that I love to do, I'll sit down at a bar, I'll sit down with Ignacio in front of the, you know, never having met Ignacio. I'm sure he yeah. makes me feel really, really comfortable at his bar. Um, but I love to find out, you know, may, what would you make me? What's the, you know, choose what you want to make, what you're excited about right now. Do you have customers that ask for that, Ignacio, very often? For a drink. Yeah. Well, they, uh, they'd ask for like, oh, down, yeah, yeah. Say, you like, know, I have a lot of choice or. Uh, I got a lot of customers. They sit down and they want me to, uh, even if we had on the menu cocktails, but they always want. Can you, they already tried some of them, but always they want to, can you make me something different, but you know, um, delicious, like the way you did these cocktails. So yeah. I always like to do that. I um, I take that challenge to make something different. We got different syrups and different fruits and the walking that I can go run and, and get whatever I can get over there and make something different for them. So that's the, that's the best thing for me, like be creative and um, challenge myself, you yeah. know, and, and that I love to see those faces whenever they say like, oh my, this is great cocktail, should be in the menu or like, yeah. you know, even <laughs> um, push me more to be better, you know, all the time. And this is a great thing to be uh, behind the bar. And, you know, I like yep. people, I like to talk to people and everything, so. Oh, man, I can't wait to come down and uh, sit at your bar. So just to recap, uh, we're talking with Ignacio Murillo, and he, uh, he started as a busser 18 years ago at the AOC. He just walked in looking for a job, had no idea that uh, that probably that Suzanne Gowen and Caroline Stein owned the place, um, needed a job. But but he didn't just need a job. He jumped in there. He started to learn the menu, learn the food, got immersed in the process, in the philosophy, in the uh, in the church of AOC, and Eventually, he moved up to the bartender position, where then he furthered and uh, furthered ho further honed his skills, uh, cocktail skills, learning about wine and beer. Developed an incredible palate and a talent for layering flavors and textures in a magical way. He's now center stage running AOC's bar program, featuring seasonally motivated cocktails created to pair with Chef Suzanne Gowen's market menu offering. So let's talk about these cocktails. Uh, Dr. D, do we need to take a break before we do? Mm -hmm. So we're going to take a real quick break so that I can try another one of these cocktails on break. Um, and we'll be right back with the flower of Fresno. Oh, beautiful. That's great. Very good. Okay, stand by. Let me just... Uh... We've got uh, 12 minutes left, guys. Mm -hmm. You're doing fine on time, too, by the way. Let me yeah, just... so I, I think if we spend uh, uh, maybe a, what, a minute, we got five, we got 12 minutes, maybe two minutes on each. Okay. Yeah. I'll set you up, Ignacio. I'll kind of do the title, and then I'll ask you to tell me about what's in it. And then, yeah. and then some of these great quotes that you have about each one, it would be great to talk about. Oh, so we try and then we'll just go to the next one and the next one. All right, here we go. Okay, yeah. Three. So, Flower and Fresno is one of oh, the- Hold on one second. He's gonna, Richard's gonna count us in before yeah. they start. he starts recording. Right. All right, here we go. In three, two, one. Welcome back to the Jeremiah Show. It is happy hour. 
Bye. all the time at the Jeremiah <laughs> show. <laughs> it's our show. We'll do with it what we want. And we are <laughs> some nanner nanner. I love it. We're with uh, Matt Duggan, general manager of AOC, uh, AOC in the two locations. Um, Matt is a, a, a welcome back to old friend, uh, a missed friend. And we're glad to have him back here on the Jeremiah show with uh, he's bringing to us and introducing to us Ignacio Murillo. He is the head barman at AOC. And now we're going to talk about the new five new cocktails for uh for the season here we're going to talk with fla about flower of fresno i love the names on these what's in the flower of fresno ignacio well yeah flower of fresno is um it's an inspired all the um peaches fresh peaches right now the issues um um peaches and bourbon they all bourbon they always go well together you know but i just want to add some more elements like uh honey right now they're delicious on the market um, and also I want to add some little brightness from the uh, lavender. So mm -hmm. I made like a lavender tea with the honey syrup and um, uh, peach, peach puree and bourbon. So I think it's very nice and, and delicious summer cocktail right now. So I can, you yeah. can smell it and taste it. You, it's a, it, is that important to you to have that, you know, that you, you breathe yeah. it in and then you taste it, uh, you know, you get the backup of. Yeah, you get a, like a nice, uh, you get a, like a, a, the, the lavender in there, fresh peaches from the market, which is they're very aromatic. And, you know, even the bourbon is getting like a nice um, oh, complexity yeah. there with the bourbon. So mm -hmm. it's like a nice and bourbon boozy drink, but it's still like a nice and refreshing summer cocktail. Mm -hmm. Why why Fresno in the name? Did you already tell me this? And I missed yeah, it. Fresno is, uh, um, you know, it's like a, because Fresno is one of the, um, uh, um, one of the states of um, they really grow more, more, almost most of the peaches on Fresno's, uh, California. He was visiting some relatives so up in Fresno was, and was noticing all the peaches, went to the market. Yeah. And big, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but really large lavender farms, right? In Fresno? Oh, yeah. yeah. You, yeah. Drive by, you see them? There, um, they had a big fields of uh, lavender everywhere. So whenever you grow up all the way there, so you can smell all that lavender and everything there, like. It's incredible. Yeah, it is incredible. Oh, uh, uh, this one has to be named after Dr. D, I think. Or it should be your drink. <laughs> Fiesta Jalisco. <laughs> uh, yeah. There you go. Tell us what's in that one, uh, Ignacio. Well, yeah, Fiesta Jalisco is just reminding when I was a uh, child in Mexico there. Um, they make like a lot of festivals at school and yeah. parties, family parties. Uh, they make a lot of agua frescas with the uh, high biscuits, you know, for the Jamaica. So by this time they're on the bar. So I want to bring that back to the bar with the high biscuit, which is delicious. I make like a nice, beautiful um, syrup with the high biscuits. This high biscuits, uh, describe the flavor. So high biscuits is a flower can is nice and uh, tart, you know, sweet tart. Um, yeah, which is go well with the tequila. You know, I want to make something with tequila, uh, tequila with high biscuits. And I want to add some more elements like watermelons that are on season. So I had some uh, watermelon juice and lime, and I make like a nice, uh, I was thinking to put a little nice rim of chili rim in there. So I dehy dehydrate some high biscuits with the Fresno chilies and uh, flour the salt. So I just put a nice rim in there to make it pretty and, you know. Matt, what's your, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your favorite cocktail on this in these five? Can you narrow it down to one that we haven't talked about? Yeah, I'm I'm torn actually. I like the campesino, and I like the uh, uh, his cherry twist on the old fashioned, the Tartarian old fashioned. Uh, the campesino is nice because it's a it's a beautiful nod to a guy that we adore, Alex Weiser, who's a farmers market star, and uh, we've always loved his stuff. And it wasn't too long ago that actually uh, Mario hooked up with him, met him, spent some time with him, so he was in his thoughts when he created that one. So I'm pretty crazy about yeah. this campesino. Yeah. Campesino, yeah. So what's in that? Uh, well, basically, uh, that's uh, cappuccino is like basically uh, honeydew melon puree, mm -hmm. you know, which is I grow in my garden. Like uh, last year, I get some seeds and I throw in my garden there. So this year I have like honeydew melons from a uh, Weiser farm. Love honeydew. You know, like, nice and sweet. Mm -hmm. You know, my neighbors, they have some like a, like a soap earth, like rosemary, um, uh, basil and, and different types of chilies in there. So 
I'm inspired on that. Like I say, what, I want to bring something with mezcal. So I put some uh, honeydew melon puree with mezcal and a uh, basil syrup. I make like a basil syrup and I put a little bit of not, uh, I want to put a little bit of tasho uh, heat in there, which is mm -hmm. I make a jalapeno, jalapeno juice, you know? Mm -hmm. So I mix all together. I, really yeah, and I love, these all sound really, um, really tasty, but also um, like fresh and light, like with the fruit, with the, with the melons and the, yeah, and the I, fresh juices, you know? Um, it really feels like, cool. yeah, it feels like it. I, I love the Campesino. Uh, Campesino is yeah. Spanish word for hardworking farmers. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I just yeah. You come with a Campesino. Right. Sounds good there. Like, and Alex know. Weiser is a hardworking farmer. So, yeah. adore him, so. Well, my brother, Jamie, he loves uh, Tartarian. Well, he loves old fashioned. So tell me about the Tartarian, your take on that with a Tartarian yeah. old fashioned. And, uh, and by the way, happy birthday, Jamie. <laughs> um, yeah tartarian old fashioned you know we gotta like um um short season of the cherries you know and i really like the uh type of the tartarian cherries which are they're nice and sweet and dark so i want to make something as a uh, drink which is a spirit forward you know so i i made like a nice um cherry liqueur uh with the brandy vodka and um vanilla all different uh, ingredients in there it really comes very nice and delicious. So I want to substitute the Damerera, which is classic syrup from uh, old fashioned with a um, mm -hmm. cherry liqueur. And also I made my own uh, bitters with cherries as well, with all different botanicals. And um, it really- You're an amazing guy. It's really he's, he's got an interesting history with uh, cherries in our bar too, because back in his bar backing days, cherry season goes by so quick and we're always trying to catch it, grab it and hold on to it somehow by making yeah. a cherry liqueur or some bitters or something. And uh, and uh, one of his uh, early bar bagging jobs is remember he'd have to pit so many cherries. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'd get tons and tons of them all at once. Yeah, like a, yeah. And, they, and they, it looked like a crime scene, guys. He'd be just covered <laughs> cherry, <laughs> cherry juice all over <laughs> you and and your, your head. head. Yeah, it was like SPU in the pantry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can relate to that because I was pitting cherries and I was using a knife and, oh man, you're absolutely right. It just, and I really worked hard. I stayed close to the sink in, in terms of where we live. Uh, I put down a, a breadboard to make sure I didn't get the, the countertop all stained. I mean, I went all out to make sure because I knew it was going to be messy. It's all going to be stained. It's a mess, yeah, yes. yeah. All right, so uh, here we are, head barman Ignacio Murillo, his uh, his new cocktails, five new seasonal cocktails for AOC, both locations. We've got the last one here, and that is Harry's GNT. Take it away, Ignacio. Tell us about it. Yeah, yeah. So um, Harry's Berries is one of the famous um, farmers right here in California. Uh, they have delicious uh, strawberries, berries. But I want to come with something summery cocktail, which is kind of nice and spritzy summery, but I had a gin base, you know, so I want to bring in some nice color in there. So I infused some of the uh, strawberries, uh, Harry's in there, you know, uh, with a gin and I made like a, a rhubarb tonic with this, all different botanicals, lemongrass, lemon peels, and a lot of stuff in there. So I ended up with a mega gin and tonic with a gin, uh, tonic, rhubarb tonic, and uh, just put a little bit, top it up with the soda water, nice, um, different um, berries in there, and rosemary on top, just get it, the aroma, yeah. and fish, and refreshing. So if, you're, yeah. if you're listening to uh, this interview right now, and you're listening to us on Radio Candy Radio in Los Angeles, um, Flippy Yui, <laughs> pedal to the metal, turn your blinker on, whatever it takes, get over to AOC and you have some happy hour here. Have a, oh, have, a have a nice time with Matt and Ignacio. This this drinks uh, menu sounds incredible, Ignacio. Then get a well hotel done. room, okay? Yeah, well done. Yes, yes. <laughs> do not drink and drive after that. Um, real quickly, because I've got two less than two minutes here. Uh, what's your family think? You got a family, Ignacio? What do they think about your? Yeah, yeah. I mean, beautiful yeah. family. I yeah. got, a, I got a three kids actually. I got two daughters and one boy. Um, my dad is gonna turn like fifteen year, fifteen years soon. Hmm. Yeah, my son, he's twelve, and I got a little baby. Um, she's five, so I got a. Uh, they're, one they're proud of their papa, I'm sure. 
Well, you know, I was talking about <laughs> this and everything, and I feel they they are proud of me. Or, yeah, know? they are. So, they very should cool. be. They should very be. Cool. I, I'm. I'm very honored to have met you, and I can't wait to see you in person down there at AOC. Yeah, Matt, yeah. Um, it's so good to have you. As uh, Caroline said in our last hour, uh, so great to have Matt back in the family. You had a you had a little leave of absence there during COVID, and you're back at AOC. You used to run Luke all those years. Uh, you're the face that everybody recognizes and uh, you recognize everyone Matt, right. um, everybody <laughs> yeah how, how do you uh, what do you final words here on being back at AOC and just being you know your the whole group there everybody that you work with in your family uh, restaurant means community that's what it means to us yeah everything here is delicious and that's so important but uh, at its uh, beating heart it's about community and and so that's it it was a decision of the heart and uh, I'm back with my family right, right. yeah yeah. We're glad to see you all back in fact, together. In fact, to say goodbye, we're going to, uh, uh, behind the bar, we always just call each other Mijo. Mijo, yes. Yeah, so that's it. You know, no, no names. So uh, we'll, we'll include you in that family, and we're going to say cheers, Mijos. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. <laughs> that's a perfect way to end here. Cheers. Go you know, see the family at AOC, uh, the two Mijos, <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> and communicate, listen more and evolve. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you.